How good is that? Oh my word. Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello and welcome. So this is a new format for us. It is. We, we've tentatively, it, whether this actually makes it to the edit or not, I don't know, but we've tentatively called it Dan and Mick's Pick and Mix. <laughs> because, because, thanks to you guys watching this show, all the comments, all the views, everything else, all the interaction, seems like uh, people are starting to notice and they've started sending us things um, to try out, which is great. It's amazing. Um, however, you know, if we've just done a show on something, it's going to be a little while before we do another show on something theme-wise. So we thought, do you know what? A few pedals are turning up, so let's just pick out a few of the things that we've been sent recently. We'll stick them on a board, we'll go through them, and we'll see what happens. Yes, love it. Uh, okay, well let's get into it. The amps we're using today, we've got the Hampstead and the Victory V40 Deluxe. First showing for the V40 Deluxe Is on that it? pedal show, I believe. We might have used it for the DNM Drive demo. Okay, so let's do this then. This is the um, this is the Hampstead. <laughs> Righteous, righteous tones. Seeing as we start, seeing as we started talking about it, let's just do this for for. Seeing as this is Dan and Mix Pick and Mix, we can include the victory in that, right? Um, so the Vic V40 Deluxe is different from the V40 because it's got valve, tremolo, and reverb. Here is the reverb. <laughs> That is lush. Valve driven and recovered reverb, and it's got a tone control as well, so the so the decays can sound like this. Duller, duller or less dull, and it has tremolo. Amazing, amazing. It's it's a really, 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 really cool lamp. Um, the Hampstead we've been been through before. You can see that on Dan's uh, video about it. Okay, let me just remember where we were. On the amp, I think we were about there, a little bit of reverb. Beautiful! And together they sound like this. Awesome. Nice, they work very well together. Okay, right, let's get into it then. So, where should we start, Daniel? Well, let's start at the beginning because- This I, side? That side. So, I've had to, uh, in, as usual, I've had to write some notes because uh, my brain can't take in information. So, uh, Seymour Duncan Killing Floor. Seymour Duncan is on a real march at the moment. They are. Uh, they have, obviously, if you don't know about Seymour Duncan, pickup manufacturer of great note. They happen to be the pickups in this guitar. Um, and they're the antiquities, right? They are antiquities. I had when they first came out. I bought a set of antiquities for a Telecaster I was getting built at the time. Yeah. And I remember pulling them out, and they're all dirty and grimy. Just thinking, ah, oh, these things are so cool, and they're amazing pickups. Yeah, really, they're cool. really, they, really great. They seem to suit this guitar really well. Mm. So very happy with those. Um, and Seymour Duncan has made lots and lots of pedals over the years. Seem to be on a bit of a march at the moment, mm. one of which, I believe this was released at NAMM this year, is the Killing Floor Boost. Right. A high gain boost, which gives you boost obviously up to 34 dB, plenty of volume, and the golden thing of pedals, it's an amp-like overdrive, Dan. <laughs> Hey-ho, um, so, all right, there's the sound with two amps. Killing Floor engaged. The whole place is shaken. It's awesome.
trying to remember the riff to Killing Floor. <laughs> Dan and I, we were Dan and I were in Rome at the weekend, having a romantic uh, holiday away together. <coughs> and um, Dan wrote a song, which may or may not get revealed on that pedal show one day. It was called Peeny Virgini. Ah, okay? <laughs> uh, that was awesome. It was written while watching you two at the uh, Stadio Olimpico. Amazing though, yeah, right? Yeah, and we, we, Bono, we could see Bono singing it. We just thought, Pini surely, Virginia. surely they're going to end with Peeny Virginia. Yeah, anyway, they didn't. Yeah, so um, loads of bottom end. Loads of bottom end. Now this is, so one thing I'm really interested in is whether or not, um, this is called Killing Floor, high gain boost. It is full frequency. So one thing I'm really interested in is seeing how that sounds into... An overdrive because I think you know, as a boost awesome but have they thought about it going into the front of a high gain amplifier and boosting it that way if so is that bottom end going to be well I'll tell issue? you what before we move on to pedal let's just do that in the v40 a minute because um, I can get quite a lot of gain going in the front okay. of the v40 all right so what you're gonna hear now is we'll turn the uh, hamstead off you'll only hear the v40 and Dan will start and the amp will be set with relatively low front end gain, which is how it's set currently. I will then increase that front end gain um, and reduce the master volume so that the front of the amp is overdriving more and will hear the effect of the pedal in that environment. Does that make sense? Sounds like a plan. Okay. Cool. Let's hear the pedal. Even even like that, it's still. So with that. So I'm going to give the victory a lot more gain. I'm going to put the mid kick in. I'm going to move to voice two, and I'm going to dime, or at least I'm going to turn up the uh, input. <laughs> It does. Nice. Interesting. So yeah. It into a gain damp, it could it could start to get messy. So I think you'd probably need to watch your EQ. Yep. Uh, did you want to try it to an overdrive pedal? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. So let's. This is the Pura from NRG. Anything now, cat related is okay with me. You're a fan of cats, aren't you? Well, I'm a big fan of cats, yes. Oh. You and um, oh, what's what's uh, everybody else in the everyone world? Everyone else in the world. Yeah. Fair enough. There's 50 billion cat videos. Can't be yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. What is this? This is the Pura from NRG. So Neil Hand makes these um, in England. I do remember whereabouts in England. Anyway, from the UK. Coventry. Um, Cornwall. Leeds. Uh, let's just start throwing names out. Yep. Um, somewhere in England. Somewhere in England. And so I saw it and I thought I was intrigued. And he was passing by. I said, oh, you know, come on in. I'll have a listen. And he brought it in and it was spectacularly good. Then I took the back off and had a look, as I do, because I'm a bit of an idiot that way. And 
the build quality is incredible. Oh, okay. Absolutely incredible. So everything is handmade, you know, one component at a time. It's beautiful. So basically what we have is we have the uh, master volume, the green. We have a uh, treble and bass. And then we have two different gain stages on the milder overdrive side, which is you can tell when the yellow cat's eyes are lit. Yep. We have the gain stage for that one. So we get this. Nice, right? It is nice. It's really nice. But then we have the Red Gania side with an extra Master Volume Edition. So you could use that as a solo boost, or in fact, um, because it's Gania, have a much gainier sound, but turn it down to sure. match the level of the of the the cleaner overdrive. So I really like that. Another really cool thing is it has you have a bunch of different options when you order it. They're all handmade one at a time. Right. So like for example, I can plug in this little cable here. And now I can switch the sides using G2. Oh, I see. So you can reorder it. You can well, you can add this extra gain stage in. I can see why you like this. So uh, Dan tends to like overdrives that have plenty of high end retained, mm -hmm. uh, that don't add too much mid hump, so that it still sounds kind of full rangey. Yeah. Uh, but it does. It is dropping a bunch of low end off there, which is kind of what you want in a gainy sound. Yeah. So it doesn't get too like. You do have treble and bass yeah. here. So if I go back to that and I... So... I actually can get a bit fuzzier up the, yeah. up the top end there, can't yeah. I, I really like this. Is it, is it op amps, do you know, or is it, do you know what's in there? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's transistors. Yeah. But I also like the way it cleans up. Oh dear, your guitar's out of tune, I better play the guitar. So now let's add cleans the killing... Up, cleans up nice. Cleans up great, doesn't it? Now mm -hmm. let's add the killing floor to the front of that. Is the, is the killing floor before that? The killing floor is... Oh, you're right. The killing floor is after that. So right. Oh, yeah, because that me, was adding an immense amount of drive. All right, let me just uh, go Immense amount of level, here. sorry, should I say. Let me just put it before. Oh, can the G2 uh, yeah, move yeah, the yeah, position yeah, of loops, yeah, Daniel? Yeah, the yeah, the, the oh, G2 by the gig rig uh, can move loops very... Successfully. So there you go, that's back to that. Yeah.
loads of overdrive, loads of clarity, loads of kind of sizzle and... Oh. Yeah, nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Really nice. So, big fan. Big fan. So it does work really well with things in front of it as well. I want to try something else in front of now. now. Okay. Right. I've been really excited to try this. This is the Octopus from... Bigfoot Engineering. Bigfoot Engineering. So, I have to refer to my notes here just to make sure I don't get anything wrong. Reese Stubbs. Now, Reese is based in Herefordshire. And oh, Reece, UK as well? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Reese started um, Bigfoot Engineering in uh, 2009, according to his website, um, and has a really nice... If you go onto the uh, Bigfoot Engineering website and check out some of their videos, he's just obviously got this very artistic, unique approach to things mm. and I blooming love that because you know with no disrespect to the 18 billion output cheapo pedals from wherever which of course are a great way into pedals I love the fact that somebody is doing something artistic unique and with a different spin and this has a different spin big time doesn't it massive if you have a close look at this pedals there are a no LEDs? No, no LEDs. There's no knobs of any kind. There's also no power input. It's passive. It's passive. This pedal requires no power. However, it does require a buffered input. Okay. So, but this is why I'm genuinely excited about this. This is an octave fuzz. Now, one of the things about 99% of octave fuzz out there, that they don't work with buffered pedals. Right. Whereas this one requires a buffer. Right. Okay. So let me show you. Um, if I let's start with this. Is it clean sound? So, what I'm, my chi, man. Sorry, dude. What I'm going to do? I'm going to put the pedal on without a buffer. Yeah. And it still works. Sounds like all the best broken first pedals. Yep. But now if I put it on with the buffer. Now I'm going to boost your signal going into it. So sensitive. Because normally my, my default uh, approach to a octave up pedal like this is to play somewhere around the 12th fret and knock the guitar volume back. Mm -hmm. I did that to begin with and it, it just wasn't giving the pedal enough. Yep. When you gave it a bit more there... Yeah. That sounds so good. Isn't it amazing? Now, let's pair that up. It's a different experience to uh, to other octave up pedals that I am familiar with. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Just desperately trying to remember that what the one I use is the full tone. Right. Now, if we use that, if you just play this one for us.
Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that, that was my really bad impression of Josh Hom, but Simon's laughing, <laughs> <laughs> laughing his head off. Just hit it with some bigger pickups for a sec. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. I just realised we have a cat theme today. What was that? That was the octopus and That's the, the octopus into the NRG. NRG, that was... Oh yeah, well, there's loads there's of cats. There's three cat pedals on there. Yeah, rewind to the beginning. Uh, so today's show is all about cat theme. <laughs> um, so there are. Yeah. That's why it sounds so good. <laughs> awesome. I, you know, when... Uh, so Reese got in touch and said, can, can I send you some pedals? to look at, well, yeah, please, by all means. Because he also makes a lion fuzz pedal. Right. I think it's called lion, something like that. Anyway, king king fuzz, maybe, which is really ace, which we'll do on another show. Um, I was like, passive pedal, really? And of course, in the comments now, there'll be 18 million comments going, yes, you idiot, there are millions of passive pedals out there. So it sounds like passive well, pedals would need to be another show. There's not millions of them, but, you know. And we can get into it. Yeah, sure. But that. It's amazing, isn't it? So yeah. basically, I don't want to upset anybody, but I, I think that's going to hit my board instead well, of the Well, they have octave. to get another one because I need that as well. <laughs> Seriously, I think it's incredible. I love, but just what it does with chords, yeah, is incredible. It's unique. It yeah. also has, um, according to recent, also has like a proper transformer in there. Well, that's how it on does on the output it. stage. Well, yeah, it, yeah, because it's, or I guess there is no output stage because it's just, yeah. So how does it even work? I don't even understand. You have your signal goes into a transformer. Okay. And that, and what happens is, it transforms, it goes from one side of the one side of the, of the transformer to the other, which is the secondary, and then you manipulate the secondary, and that's how you get your stuff. Great. Moving on. Um, it's very cool. It's amazing. It's I'm. I have to have one. And we'll just say it again. There's no battery. There's no. Power. No battery. There's nothing to ever. How does that? Anyway, anyway. let's move on. So. The second cat-themed pedal is the cat... Q-Cat. Q-Cat. From CKK. Brand that I wasn't aware of. Currently being brought into the UK by uh, Zoom. Uh, exclusive dis distribution Zoom UK. Um, and is a Chinese brand from Beijing. Right. Is it Beijing or Beijing? Beijing. Yeah, I had a lot of people put a hard J on it, but anyway. Um, I lived there for... Uh, Nearly a year. No way. Yeah, man. I used to play in a band at the Hard Rock Cafe in Beijing, and we had two contracts there, and it was totally awesome. How cool is that? Yeah. What did you eat? Ah, oh, dude. So, so we had we could eat all the food at the Hard Rock that we wanted, but we found these incredible little restaurants. There's one little restaurant, and it was like a dirt floor and stuff. The lady spoke. The, the lady didn't speak any English. And you would literally just open up a book and point at random things, and then food would come out. It was amazing, and if it, <laughs> it was great. And then so I'd point at stuff, and she'd bring out some carrots. I go, yeah, that's good. I point at some stuff, she brings that's good. I point at nothing, she brought out a snake. Uh, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm fine. That's, well, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, it tastes okay. Anyway, yeah, anyway, we digress. As long as there's no cats involved, I'm fine. Um, but Beijing is amazing. So CKK is a brand that is part of a, uh, a, another company called Sinvertech, and Sinvertech also make pedals 
which we are going to be looking at in the near future, have a very, very cool analog delay. So this is an oh, example cool. of something from CKK. They're very um, sensibly priced. So I think in UK pounds at this time uh, in history is about 85 quid, so it's pretty sensible. Okay. But they make a big deal about the design, the quality of the components and all the rest of it. So this right. is an envelope filter. What's your favourite envelope filter of all time ever? That one. Yeah. Qtron. The Musitronics Mutron 3. Yeah, okay. Oh, Qtron is the electroharmonics thing, isn't it? Qtron is the electroharmonics yeah, yeah. thing, actually designed by the same guy. Oh, really? Yep. So, we will do a show on envelope filters because they are really, really interesting. What is an envelope filter, Dan? It basically takes the initial attack and filters it. So, uh, lots of bass players use them a lot. Booty Collins was one of the early guys using that. Um, so, it just gives you that, wow. There's that Edie Brickell song that's got that famous guitar solo. Yeah, is it that one? Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll but anyway, the that. guitar solo one. It's just an can amazing you, guitar solo. Can you think of a commonly available uh, manually operated envelope filter, Dan? Uh, you mean the wire pedal, <laughs> Michael? Where would you? What would you do with overdrive? Would you put it before, after, afterwards? After, because it all, it's so sensitive to the input of the guitar. Yeah. If you put anything before it, it changes the the way that it attacks the note. Yeah. So if I set this up, you know, to work with this guitar. <laughs> And then I put a whole please, bunch Please of... play the theme tune to Grange Hill. I can't. You, do you know need that? to do that. I, I don't actually know it. It's all minor pentatonics, I think. Sorry, that was the that was the painful experience of going through someone trying to remember something they don't know how to play. For anyone um, not around the age of forty and from the UK, Grange Hill was a popular kids' TV program uh, in the UK. Okay. Yeah. You keep talking about it. I've never seen it, never heard it, but I'm going to have to go and have a listen. Yeah, that's because you're Austro-Malaysian. <laughs> <laughs> it's the equivalent of Home and Away, just set in a in a, a British school with young people. <laughs> yes, that sounds good. Anyway, it's, it's um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have a question. So it can sound like an auto war. Yep. So you can give it the old. Desperately try not to go wow, wow, wow with my mouth because that's what always happens. So you can do the auto wire thing. Yep. Presumably you can also set it so that it doesn't envelope uh, quite so dramatically. Well, you change just... it, it goes down to, it changes instead of going um, from the start of the bass frequencies and then opens up to the high frequencies, it starts with the high frequencies and goes to the lower frequencies. But so... can you set it so that it, it kind of is more of a fixed for like a solo type thing if you wanted like a really vocal? Do they work that way? No, not really. 
Let's try this. Because there's always a, there's always going to be a, a gate on there. Okay. You know. That's an envelope filter. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I think if you wanted to do auto wari type stuff, get those vocally sounds going on. Can we hear it with a bit of gain? It's kind of pseudo y, um, Peter Frampton. Yeah, yeah. Just doing a similar that, job, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. As that. Yep. Cool, cool. Cool. Right. Two more. Two more. We've been waiting to do this uh, since January. It's now July. Yes. This is amazing. This is. Without any pedals on. Right. I love this. Okay, I'm just reminding myself of the controls there. So, on the top, You've got a gain control and you've yep. got an onset control. And the onset control, all the way to the left, it comes on really quick. Yep. Can we just do that? And then all the way to the right, it comes on much slower. So for anyone still confused, it's a feedback generator. So you know when you play your guitar really loud, you've got loads of overdrive on, the guitar feeds back, and it's a beautiful and musical thing, but it does require... Volume. Yeah, frequencies, frequencies, physical position. Yep. In fact, we should do a whole show on feedback. Should we do that? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Might need some earphones that day. But anyway, um, obviously it's the sound of ages. It's the sound you've heard in loads of brilliant rock and roll sounds. And it's just, it's a very cool thing that happens with guitars. So yeah, it's a, na a natural feedback generator so that, um, well, it does what you, what you see. So you can do it that way. It can get into really ebo -y sounds. Yes. So if you turn the dry off, check this. Oh, 
That's nuts. And then you can select the frequency at which it creates the feedback. So um, apparently, so DB Technologies, I believe, owns Digitech. Right. And the way in which you get rid of feedback is that you find a particular frequency and you cancel it, mm -hmm. get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. I think they realized that actually if you turn that around and did it the other way and you boost it, that's where you can generate the, the feedback okay. artificially. Right. So they just took one of those DBX things, turned it upside down, <laughs> plugged in and it worked. That's, that's, how, that's how that happened. <laughs> um, so you can, you can use it in that way, which is very sort of uh, freaky, uh, odd sounds without the dry in. But let's get some gain on. Let's see if we can actually make it like a proper feedbacking guitar. Okay. Because at the moment it all sounds very affected. Sounds kind of, you know, ethereal and all of that kind of stuff. Also, just while he's doing that, I'll explain that it can be set to operate um, automatically, or if you put that switch there, you can use this switch. As a momentary. As a momentary to turn it on and off. Well, maybe we'll do that in a sec. Okay. So, give me some sugar. So one thing that is a problem is glissando. Yes. So if you play, um, if you slide between notes, it's going to slide with you, so it'll sound more like a synth. Right. So you need to kind of play definite notes and then hold one. Okay. Quicker or slower? No, a bit slower. And I want the. So these are harmonics as opposed to. Yep. And it tracks the note as well. Again. Because their amps are really loud and there's natural feedback going, it's all mashing into one another. Yeah. So we need to turn down. Here's the freaky bit. Check this I'm out. Turn down here. Can we can we turn the master yeah, yeah, down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So let's have it super quiet, like yeah. almost unnaturally quiet. Okay. And at this point we may need to rely on our room mic. <laughs>
So at that point, I mean, obviously you could never ge generate any natural feedback at that kind of volume. That's, no. Well, that's this loud. That's this loud, not very loud at all, because I'm talking over it. You could even go... You could even go to this level, which is nothing. That's, honestly, I'm just talking at my normal volume now. That's practicing my your voice. wife sleeping next to you. Yeah, and you'll hear that through our normal mic there. I used to have a boss feedback and distortion pedal. Yeah. So, yeah, it was... Um, there are pedals that have done this, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd hold the note, and then you'd press down on the pedal, and it would start oh, feedbacking that note. Um, and that, man, that was that was a long time ago. And what you'd get, I think I'm right in saying, with some of those earlier pedals was quite a lot of artefact. Yeah. And you get artefact with that if you don't, kind of play to the pedal you strengths. Gotta, yeah, yeah, you've got to set it up properly. If you just, you know, approach it normally and expect it to act like an amp, it's not going to do that. Mm. But um, I think there's a lot of creativity in there. It's lovely. We saw, um, so Digitech's, uh, a guy that does some Digitech demos uh, is a guy named Ford. I'm sorry, I don't know his surname. but Oh, man, he is a monster guitar player. Killer, killer player. He's got like a 67, 68. Oh, Might that... even be 66. The 335. Might even be 64, you know? It's a, the most... A, it's a nice guitar anyway. It's a nice guitar, but boy, oh boy, he is astonishing. Yeah, and he was making it sound super musical in a way that Dan and I were... that was alluding us to. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very cool. It's cool. Well, listen, we've got one, one last pedal. Um, we're not going to get to spend nearly enough time with this thing today because this is the new thing from Wampler, the Ethereal, and I've been... We've been talking about this for a long time, having delay and reverb... Yeah, why thing. why doesn't every manufacturer on the planet do a delay and reverb in one pedal? Because it seems the most obvious hmm. thing to do. Mm -hmm. They're they're more available now than there were, but they're still not common, are they? Yeah. But this does it in a slightly different way, doesn't it? It does. It's not just two separate pedals. It's. Oh. I'll turn the amp on the reverb, uh, the amp reverb off. Okay, so if I turn the delay mix down and we'll just hear the reverb. Okay, so the tone affects the reverb and the delay. So you can have quite dark or quite bright. This is the delay, but this is what I love about this. Just skank it once. Oh wow, so it's really kind of... Really rhythmic, kind of vintage type. the delay and reverb together. Bye. 
Was that everything on? There's lots of things on. Come on, give it a go. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? As soon as you start getting into loads of filters and it all, I obviously yeah. couldn't work out what was in which loop, which loop there, but that was fun. It was fun. That we was should, fun. We should do this more. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I like this. Um, it's kind of a voyage of discovery, so you have to bear with us as we sort of dig into. Yeah, the because pedals. everything's surprising. We, you know, when we're we're finding out things as we go, and but it's some really great sounds. Blown away by the octopus. Love the Pura by Energy. Mm. It's great. We've we've heard this before. We knew this was going to be great. Yeah, you know, and it does. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, it's it's the kind of thing um, when you decide what delay pedal you're going to go for. Sometimes you might just want a very simple thing. That yeah, that's one thing. I think that is an example. For me, that sits very nicely between your you know DD three or whatever that mm -hmm. you want just for a bit of slapback or a bit of you know whatever. Very simple delay. And something that blows your head off, like a timeline or a yeah, yeah. DD five hundred or something, which you don't want to get into. That that to me offers, in terms of delay anyway, seems to offer a bunch of inspiration there mm -hmm. with those patterned repeats mm -hmm. and everything. That it's great. You need to sit down and play with it, don't you, just to yeah. find out where that it where it works for you. Yeah. And then of course add that massive reverb in on top. Yeah. I can see that being very popular. Yeah. That's fantastic. Very popular. Excellent, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. We're nearly there. We're nearly at 100k. Nearly there. And hopefully by the time a lot of people watch this video, it'll be like, oh, they're way over 100k now. They're on 8 million subscribers. <laughs> a massive thank you to our patrons from Patreon. Um, thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. And it sends music. In America. Rift City Guitar. And in Australia. Uh, Pedal Empire. And finally, uh, massive thank you to the guys who've gone to the shop and purchased... Yes. One of these. And one final one thanks these. today to Tom Waterman, who's come down from Universal Audio. Thank yes, you, Tom. Tom. Thank you, Tom. It's We're amazing. checking out some new recording gear, trying to uh, move our game on a little bit. And um, yes, it's going to be an enlightening experience. Yeah, so yeah. thank you, Tom. Brilliant. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. And we'll see you next week. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheerio.